Sir, how would you characterize the situation with sovereign risk in Europe today? Well, I think that uh, some countries have still to implement the um, adjustment programs and they have to continue to, to go in that direction, to continue to make the commitments, to follow the commitments they've taken and um, that will take time, but that's uh, the way to continue and to proceed. Ireland had its stress test today. Yes. That's clearly part of its plan to convince investors, everyone, that it's plugging the holes um, in its banking system. And yet we had another uh, downgrade in a rating from S&P, and Fitch uh, put uh, the outlook on negative. They're not necessarily think, rewarded for these yes, steps, are they? Right. So I think they probably these rating agencies are a bit behind the curve because uh, the um, stress tests have shown the willingness of Ireland in particular to recapitalize the banks, uh, to uh, put these banks on a new footing, so able to go back to the markets. And that's a very positive uh, development, and I think we support that. You believe that Ireland will succeed in convincing investors? Well, that's the program. We have agreed uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, Ireland, together with the IMF and the European Commission, so as long as they follow the program, we will support it and they will succeed. What would uh, the price be for the uh, what will the price be for the Irish economy? Well, if they don't follow this, uh, it would be much worse because uh, uh, they would lose credibility of the markets. They would not be able to go back to borrow again, and it will make it very difficult then to support the development of the of the Irish economy and the pickup of the Irish economy, which is needed to. Uh, make the debt sustainable. How long so the alternative scenario is much worse. How long will the ECB continue to provide liquidity for Irish banks? Is that kind of an well, We said we will continue. To, we've done it so far. So, yeah. and so how we far will can that uh, be continue in force conditional on the program uh, being implemented. How would you characterize the situation in Portugal when it comes to sovereign risk? Well, I don't want to comment uh, too much on Portugal. Uh, the markets uh, are looking at Portugal. I think uh, they need to be convinced that Portugal uh, will uh, uh, implement a sound uh, fiscal policy and continue the adjustment. And uh, that's what they have to do. And they have to convince the markets that, uh, that this is the, you know, the way going forward, even after the elections. Is the ECB going to continue to, to purchase uh, Portuguese bonds? Well, I have, don't, don't have comments on that. The Greek uh, finance minister told me today that uh, the budget deficit for 2010 is uh, going to be larger than was anticipated. You wouldn't say whether it's going to be more than 10% uh, relative to GDP or not. Uh, how would you characterize how Greece is doing in getting its fiscal house? Well, order? we are monitoring together with the IMF and the European Commission. Every We are there every month, every two months. Uh, we look at what they've done. It may take time to, you know, that the results uh, show up. But the kind of reforms they're doing um, is on track. They have to continue. I mean, that's the only way. Uh, the alternative is much worse. I wanted to ask you about Spain. A, a year ago, if you were looking, or even three or four months ago, if you were looking at the bond yields of Portugal and uh, Spain, they were moving pretty much in sync. Uh, now they're going uh, separate ways. Why is that? Well, it shows that uh, if you uh, if you move ahead of the curve, if uh, political authorities move ahead of the curve and uh, take the actions before the pressure of the markets, that's more effective than waiting the pressure of the markets to take action.